Um, Board Member Dorsey, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Um, again, the whole purpose of this is to, well, my purpose in reaching out to you is to get your perspective as a person of color um, involved in local government and really shedding light on the importance of that, how local government um, impacts our daily lives, what happens like on our address, like on our streets. Um, and then just, you know, for you to give any insight that you feel is necessary for anyone who may see this video. Sounds great. So, Looking forward to um, it, Deborah. Thank you. So let's get started. So how did you, like, what steps did you take in your path to get to where you are? So, you know, I currently serve as a, a Arlington County board member. And, you know, that is the product of a lot of stuff that I, I did before. And I like to think that I, I followed a model that I would love to see other people follow. You know, first, you, uh, you identify a passion that you have to change or improve your community. And then you just get to work um, at the most grassroots level you can find. You know, for me, uh, it became uh, getting involved in local conversations about race and identity and diversity. Uh, from there, my community service passions to, you know, work with and empower youth and help them develop skills took me to a variety of uh, occupations and then volunteer services that just gave me a broad exposure to the community, understanding what worked well, what didn't work well, and what would be my particular capacity to, um, you know, either create change or facilitate change or, or just somehow be a, a, a voice at the table that can make a positive difference. And, you know, each successive experience uh, in my case, gave me more exposure to the community. And, um, you know, it wasn't necessarily always the master plan, but as a result of that, uh, you know, there were a, a number of people who uh, were interested in my, uh, you know, having a broader role in guiding our local community. And, you know, eventually uh, you run for office. And like most people, the first time I tried, I came up a little bit short, but, you know, was successful thereafter. And, you um, you know, it's it's no magic secret. You know, you don't go to college and take a course, be an elected official. You know, it's really really about what you do and about your ability to not only get stuff done, but to uh, bring people along uh, in, in the process so that you can show uh, your, your value to the community. What are some lessons learned or what's been like your overall perspective as far as being in local government where that like, you know, were there some things that were unexpected? Was there an impact that you had that you didn't quite anticipate or like? Well, you know, it, it, there, there's a lot of ways to answer that question. You know, I am an African-American man in a community that is only about 9% African-American. So we are a predominantly white community. So um, in the history of Arlington County, which is known generally and broadly as being very progressive, uh, you know, very forward thinking, you know, when it comes to elections, we are an overwhelmingly democratic community um, in terms of our, our uh, political history. Uh, but at the same time, I am only the third African-American to ever hold the seat that I occupy. And um, there were none of them before the mid 1980s. So, in a, you know, relatively Arlington's been around for 100 years as the county that we know of today, and yet the ability for people of color to uh, be a part of the local government has been rare indeed. You know, three African Americans, but only one uh, Latino. Um, there have uh, not been uh, any people who have presented primarily uh, as Asian American who have been a part of our board. So uh, in many ways, I'm, I'm still uh, in that trailblazer mode. Um, and whenever you are in that position, it, it creates opportunities and challenges, right? Uh, there's a spotlight, regardless of, uh, you know, whether you, 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 you desire it or want it, you know, people uh, are, are looking at you to not only do a great job, which is always something that people of color feel, um, yes. you, you recognize that, um, you know, you get to set the tone for how people begin to think about people who look like you or who have backgrounds that are like you. And, um, you know, when you think about it like that, that's the, that's the weight that all people of color 
uh, have going um, through a, a society where we have historically and, and are currently in many ways oppressed. That That's a weight that we carry. Um, but you know, it's one that I've carried all my life. So I, I don't feel like it's a particular burden. It is what it right. is. Right. Um, the federal level is super, super important, especially with this election coming up. And, you know, even the state elections are important as well. But for example, law enforcement, one of the, when I first started doing this, one of the, some of the, the key players that I keep hearing over and over again, the board of supervisors, um, mm -hmm. the sheriff, those like, those positions, those spaces, that's what affects, those things are what affect our daily lives. So as you know, being on the, your county board, how does local government affect our daily lives? And then specifically, can you talk about boards and commissions? And the reason that I say boards and commissions is because I really think that's a great place to get an mm -hmm. introduction into local government without feeling intimidated by having, you know, to run for an election or things like that. So great, great points, you know, and, and I agree. And, and I want to be clear, it's not just because I hold a position in local government that I'm going to talk about the importance of local government. But, you know, on the federal level, we every four years we hear this is the most important election of our lives. And it's not to discredit that sentiment. But, um, you know, in, in Virginia, at least every year we have elections that should be the most important thing in people's lives because they get a chance to choose local government officials. And while, you know, the federal government obviously plays a role in whether or not we are a secure country, um, you know, whether we have certain certain standards that, um, you know, allow every American to be connected, um, that we have the provision of our constitutional rights, et cetera, those are all incredibly important. And, but they hold a separate and distinct place from what people experience daily. And, you know, so if you'll just allow me, when you think about everyone's typical day, um, you know, you wake up in the morning uh, with an alarm clock uh, or a phone that has been uh, charged up by electricity, whose ability to be reliable is very much impacted by local government. Um, once you wake up, you hop in the shower and, and brush your teeth and expect that that water is going to be uh, not only free of contaminants, but uh, good tasting and healthy, and that is provided by your local government. Uh, you hop downstairs to get breakfast for you, and if you have children, your your, your kids, um, that that probably came from a local grocery store whose health standards are maintained by a local health department. Then you get those kids off to their public school, which is entirely, um, you know, provided for by the local government. And then when you hop on your job, where, hop to your job, wherever that may be, uh, using mass transit or hopping in your car, um, those roads that you travel on or the ability for transit to exist, that's all local government. And this is something that you lather, rinse and repeat every single day of your life. Um, so when we think about the local government's importance, it's in everything that we do. And, and I think part of why it doesn't have that place in our society is because we take it for granted. And, uh, you know, we also live in the national capital area where uh, everything is, is, is about the White House all the time. That's the media market that we're in. Many of us are political junkies, myself included. Uh, but when you take a step back and really unpack, um, you know, what your life is and, and what what makes it a good quality of life versus a negative one uh the local government uh impact is going to play a role far more often than the state or the federal level so this is where people need to care and where they need to get involved but like you said in your question the great thing about it because local government doesn't have the same kind of cachet in most people's minds the, the barriers to entry are a lot lower. Um, and, and it's not just about being an elected official. Uh, you can, in Virginia, in all of our Northern Virginia communities, we have advisory boards and commissions where most people who actually get elected come from, including me. Uh, but even if you don't ever aspire to be an elected official, if you wanna impact the policies in your community, the practices of your police, the 
opportunities that are available through your parks and libraries, the, the way development occurs, um, you can volunteer and be a part of advisory boards and commissions that make a tangible difference in things that you are doing. And then if you aspire to take that a step further and run for office, it's, it's a great way to get the experience in how bureaucracies work and what it's like to be a part of a public body. So, um, you know, the great thing is only 535 people can ever be at the Senate, in the Sen uh, House or Senate at one time. Only one individual can be president, only one individual can be vice president, uh, but there are infin infinitely more individuals who can get involved in a meaningful way uh, in their local communities. You said something in your statement um, that you that's posted on your site about your vision for um, Arlington County. You said, in the year ahead, I want to engage with as many Arlingtonians as I can in any forum to consider how we to consider how we encourage sufficient and appropriate housing, improve our resilience to weather events, and enhance our natural resources while having the infrastructure to move people and educate our children. That is why I prioritized advancing equity as a central framework for governance last year. By developing the capacity to recognize the barriers that marginalized and vulnerable populations face in trying to thrive, we can deliver a public policy that is responsive to all and not only to those with power influ and influence. That was so powerful. So since oh, you've you. been, sure, so since you've been in local government and now that you've created that visibility for people of color, have you noticed an impact? Have you noticed more of an influx um, of people being in boards and commissions and how has that changed things? So, uh, you know, first of all, Deborah, uh, thank you for, for finding that compelling. Um, it's a little bit surreal having your own words read back to you. That was a trip. So um, thank you yeah. for that, that gift. Yeah. Um, the short answer is yes, there's definitely been um, an improvement in Arlington County in getting people who represent diverse backgrounds involved. That has come with considerable effort, um, but it's an effort that is not only always worthwhile, we have to always figure out how to be more effective at those efforts. Um, and part of the reason why it's difficult is because there's been a, a perceived, not only a perceived, a real barrier for um, people who, re who represent diverse populations from being called to serve, being selected to serve, uh, or having the ways in which they can serve um, meet them where they are. So, you know, just the, the tried and true examples, so many of the ways in which we um, allow people to have a seat at the table or to be in the room where it happens is to say, you know, our meeting is at 6.30. Um, if you can participate, great. Uh, well, there are a lot of people, um, uh, particularly who come from uh, working class backgrounds where disproportionate numbers of people of color are, who can't afford to do that, can't afford to meet at that time or to be in that room at that time. And, and local governments have, have often been inflexible in saying, how can we adapt to meet the needs of people whose voices we value and whose voices need to be a part of our good decision-making? Look, I, I wanna be very clear. You know, re representation is important, but I don't desire to do this just simply to check a box of saying we've got broad representation. Governments, <clears throat> organizations, excuse me, make better decisions when you don't just have a bunch of people with the same experience uh, making those decisions. Um, mm -hmm. You always, in every circumstance, when you are able to bring uh, diverse thoughts, uh, views on uh, into a problem and uh, solutions that may solve those problems, the more you can bring uh, a diversity of those views, you are going to make better decisions, period. Yeah. And so this is not about making you feel good from a politically correct standpoint. It's not about anything other than how do you work best? And if you believe that having a bunch of people with the same backgrounds and the same lived experience is going to lead to better decision making than expanding that tent, um, then 
you're sadly mistaken in my point of view. Absolutely. If you were speaking to a room um, full of people who it's raining outside, it's getting cold, no one's protesting, um, but they still want change, what would you say to them? So the first thing would be is to, to look inward and figure out what your passions are, right? So, you know, we, we are in a moment in this country where people are activated, um, you know, based on frustration and rage, profound disappointment. Those are, those are important. Those are meaningful. And I don't mean to discredit that at all, but those things will pass. The question is, what is going to, to sustain your activism moving forward? And it's not going to be external events. It's going to be, what is your passion inside? What are the things that you really think um, need to be changed and that you have an ability to impact positively? Do some self-reflection and figure out what that is. And I don't care whether it is police practices. I don't care whether it's housing affordability, whether it is open space, libraries, or you know, environmental sustainability, whatever. Everybody's got their own passion, but, but identify that. Identify the thing that is going to make you wake up thinking, how can I do a better job in this area? And before you go to bed at night, you're going to be thinking about your excitement about getting back in the mix and, and doing it the next day. Whatever those passions are, um, once you identify them, then I want people to say, you know what? I'm going to join whatever nonprofit group, whatever meetup group, whatever advisory commission or board group that's working on this issue and I'm going to give my all to it. And instead of thinking about the destination, this will lead to my becoming uh, this or that, don't worry about that. Just let your passion guide what you do because if, if you do that, you're going to do a great job. People are going to notice. And if you want future opportunities to, to serve or, or do something else, those will come by people recognizing the value that you brought to the thing that you were passionate about. Absolutely. Okay, one more question in our six minutes left. Um, <laughs> you, said you have something else in your um, statement for that you put out in January 2020. You said, um, I will look to multiply our efforts. I will look to multiply our efforts through collaboration with our fellow Northern Virginia jurisdictions our neighbors in the national capital region and with our state government. I think it draws a really good picture as far as how local government works so closely together. Like I can, li I live in Fairfax County, I play in DC and I could work in PG County. Yeah. So it's important for me to know and be in those spaces and impact those spaces where policy is being made that's going to affect me, like you said. So um, when I saw that, I was just like, oh my gosh, that's so refreshing. And I yeah. think that that's such a great encouragement um, to encourage people and inform people of color about getting involved in local government. No, amen. And uh, you know, there's not a whole lot that's going uh, great with the response to the COVID pandemic. But one of the things that I think it's made very clear is that regional perspective that I articulated in January. Um, you know, as much as we've, we've focused on well, what's the federal government doing, what's the state doing, what's even my local community doing, we, we, we're recognizing that, you know, hey, uh, you know, Deborah lays her head in Fairfax County, but during the day, her employer is in the District of Columbia. So, you know, we just can't think about Fairfax's rules and DC's rules, and maybe you have um, you know, a partner who lives in Arlington, who you spend time in the evening with. So, you know, to the extent that we can recognize uh, those circumstances and, you know, work accordingly um, to, to better serve, uh, you know, our, our constituents and citizens, it just, it just makes sense. And fortunately, uh, a byproduct of this very, very uh, awful pandemic has been people really get that in the core. You know, I'll be honest, sometimes people, uh, you talk about regional cooperation and regionalism and people think that that's a nice to have, you know, and now this pandemic has really exposed, no, you need to have that. Okay. Um, if we're going to be effective in serving people, we, we have to think that way. And, um, you know, it's another great benefit for, for local government. 
Um, you know, I, I, I used to, in my career, work a lot with the National Congress. And as much as you would think that uh, people in Congress would recognize they're part of a body that serves the entire country, you would constantly hear people talk about, well, you know, I know it may be the right thing to do X, but that's not going to play well in my district. And it's like, well, wait a minute, what, what, what happened to understanding who your true constituency is? It's not just the narrow people who are going to return you to office. It's all of the ways in which they go about experiencing life. And yeah. so if you're, you're a congressman in New Jersey and you don't think you got to work with a congressman from Pennsylvania or New York, you're being myopic. You're missing the boat. In, in the same way, um, you know, uh, Arlington and Alexandria and Fairfax and Loudoun and Prince William, uh, we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how we collectively can serve our constituents well. Absolutely. What can we do? Like, what can your constituents do? Or like I said, I live in Fairfax County. Like, what initiatives do you have coming up? Like, what information, what takeaways? Um, yeah what action items would you like us to have? Well, so, you know, one, we talked a lot about advisory boards and commissions, and we maintain on our Arlington website a list of all of the ones that we have and which ones are currently in need of people to, to serve. So that's a great first way if uh, you want to look at the variety of ways that you can get involved right away. Uh, but, you know, Deborah, I believe uh, in the principle of equity um, in, in all ways, shapes and forms, and, and the way in which people may need um, you know, help figuring out what their path forward is going to be unique to the individual. So I encourage anybody to uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm easy to find um, on the Arlington County website, and I'd be, I'd be happy to be a personal navigator if people have specific ways they're looking to get involved. Perfect. Board member Dorsey, thank you so much for your time.